intellectual property rights, patent law. Intellectual property right refers to creations of the mind, and when we refer to the creations of our mind, we are referring to inventions, literary and artistic works, uh, names used to associate goods and services to trade. Intellectual property rights grants exclusive monopoly right. It grants exclusivity to the person who holds the right. They manifest on intangible property. In that way, they are different from real property. Real property, it's easy for us to understand real property because real property exists in time and space. It's, you, if you have any dispute with regard to real property, we could go and ascertain that physically. You could go to the place where the real property is. If it's a land, then you can, you can understand where the borders are. Intellectual property will not immediately tell you where the outer limits of those properties are. If you look at an invention, say somebody shows you a mechanical invention to you, and if that person tells you it's patented, it will be hard for you to look at the invention and say where the outlines or the borders of the property are, where uh, what is actually protected as a private right, and what are elements which the inventor has used from the public domain. You may not be able to say that immediately. You may have to do some background work, which is you may have to ask for the patent number, you may have to go search for the patent number in a patent database and download the uh, patent specification and read the claims to understand what the scope of that intellectual property right, in this case, what the scope of the patent is. So that requires some amount of exercise from you. Though you may see the manifestation of the, uh, uh, of the patent right in the form of a uh, tangible product, what your colleague had brought to brought to you a mechanical invention uh, to understand the limits you need to do an entirely different exercise which is to look at the borders of the intellectual property in a patent specification so in that sense intellectual property rights are referred to as intangible right there is also in another intangible aspect which we will be uh, dealing with in in the patent drafting class which follows this so we we will discuss that in greater detail uh, there are different kinds of uh, intellectual property rights, patents, copyright, trademarks, industrial designs, geographical indications, there, it's a long list. But patents, copyrights, trademarks and industrial designs were the original rights, what, what historically evolved as intellectual property rights. And they were also, uh, it is closer for us to associate copyright, patents, trademarks and industrial designs to creations of the mind. You may not be able to do that uh, with something like geographical indication. Uh, patents cover inventions, they are related to technology. Copyright cover expressions of ideas in, in literary, artistic uh, or uh, audio, uh, recorded uh, medium. A trademark covers uh, goods, uh, the association of goods and services uh, with, it, uh, with, an, uh, with, with, uh, with the source of its origin. In, in the case, if it's a company, then we get to know that a particular company had uh, the, through the mark, we get to know that association that a particular uh, good or a, goods or a service came from a particular uh, uh, company. Uh, industrial designs helps you to protect designs which are uh, uh, which can be mass produced, and they are they cover the aesthetic part of the designs uh, because the functional elements are usually covered by patents. Geographical indications uh, you, it, it it tells you the origin of certain goods from a particular geography, for instance, Darjeeling tea. So I, if it is covered by a geographical indication, then you would not be able to pass off any other tea as Darjeeling tea unless it comes from that geographical territory. So it is like a community mark which is held by the people who produce goods from uh, a particular location and, and, and also the location itself, the geography itself contributes to the quality of the product. It's different because of the climatic condition, because of the, uh, because of the soil or, 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 or uh, things like that. Uh, the, what is the need to protect IP? We live in a knowledge economy and, and we are increasingly seeing the fact that intellectual property has become a key player in which countries, uh, countries uh, move from uh, in various states of uh, development. I mean, a, a developing country uh, would eventually be regarded as a developed country if uh, it is it it contributes quite a lot to the knowledge economy. We have seen instances of countries migrating from the developing end to the developed country and most of them have robust intellectual property rights regime. Uh, the, inter in uh, the IP regime in India itself is uh, was recently uh, overhauled. I mean, our laws are in compliance 
with the World Trade Organization WTO and the TRIPS which is an agreement under the WTO TRIPS stands for trade related aspects of intellectual property rights and our our laws are in compliance uh, with the in the international norms and we had also recently come up with an uh, a national IPR policy which again is a, is a document which will be available for you uh, to read and understand more now uh, the, the fundamentals of patents. Now, as I said, like any other IP, it's an exclusive monopoly right granted by the government. This right is actually a bundle of rights. It gives the patentee, the person who gets the patent eventually, who, who gets to the point of TG, which is the time for grant, he gets the patent granted in his name. Uh, it gives him the right to make, sell, use, offer for sale and import uh, these are the rights and import uh, the invention that is covered by the patent. It's a territorial right. So if the Indian government grants you a patent, the patent is enforceable only within the territory of India. You cannot even enforce it in Sri Lanka or any other neighboring country. It is granted for a period of 20 years. As I said, the 20 years begins from TA, time for application, and ends with TE, which is the time for expiry. That's a normal time for expiry in case it is not challenged and the, the patentee does not uh, uh, fail to renew it. In that case, it's 20 years from the date of application. The purpose of patents is to incentivize people to disclose the inventions that have come up with. It is also to, uh, to protect uh, something which uh, is uh, for which a person has spent his time and resources in coming up with. Now, just imagine for a second what would be the world uh, without patents. Uh, people will still be inventing, obviously, that will be happening, but there could be some endeavors that will become much more riskier than it is today. For instance, if somebody needs to find the next uh, drug for a, a life-threatening disease and assume that that endeavor is going to cost millions of dollars and it is going to cost quite a lot of time for somebody to make it, uh, they could be people who would put in their effort to do it, but normally, keeping the commercial practices in mind, a uh, person will be hesitant or a group of people will be hesitant to put that effort if, they, if there is no certainty that what they invent or what they eventually come up with will be protected by the government, if there's no certainty, because which would mean that you could put in all your effort and come up with something and just find that some competitor of yours has copied it. So this has actually, there's many historical explanation as to why we have patents. This is one of it. Another one is that earlier we had the trade secret regime, where which allowed people to keep uh, some uh, invention as trade secrets to the extent the technology allowed them, which meant that the technology was incapable of being reverse engineered and figured out. But uh, the, the patent regime actually came uh, as a disclosure regime because trade secrets are kept as secrets without disclosing them. You have very smart uh, non-disclosure agreements with whomever you're going to disclose a secret and, and we know that there are many things that are today kept as a trade secret. Uh, so this would be different, uh, uh, things would be different if the trade secret regime did not eventually make way for the patent regime. In that case, inventions, no matter how worthy they are, if the inventor felt that uh, his competitors would use it and make money in the process or commercialize it uh, to his detriment, then there could be a possibility that the person would not disclose the invention at all. So, so that's another reason why the patent regime came. Uh, now, we have various international conventions governing agreements and arrangements governing patent law. Uh, Paris Convention was the first one. Then you have the PCT, which refers to the Patent Cooperation Treaty, which is managed by the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO. Uh, the, uh, uh, and you have the TRIPS Agreement, which I just mentioned, is an agreement under the World Trade Organization. Patent laws in India, I'll take a quick through the, the, the material which we have circulated com encompasses all these things. So you can just have a, I'll just mention the things that have not been mentioned there. Uh, the Patents Act itself was amended in 1999, 2002 and 2005. So most of the online copies that you will find will be compliant. But the patent rules, however, uh, it was introduced uh, in uh, 1972, but it was amended, uh, the revised version came in 2003. That rules was amended in 2005, 2006, 2013, 14, and 2016. So the 2016 rules came in, uh, in May this year. So if you are going to buy a BAR Act, ensure that it has the 
2016 rules. Not just 2016 mentioned somewhere in the book, it has to see in the cover or in the index that it has incorporated. Otherwise, you are buying a product that may not be of, um, that may, may not help you. So try to look for this when you're buying a bar act, if you plan to buy one, that it incorporates the rules. Uh, patents can be granted for products and processes. That's something which we will we'll discuss in detail. Uh, invention, what can be patented? Uh, what can be patented cl can be classified into three categories. One, not all inventions can be patented. Only the inventions that are patentable and which, which, uh, which uh, satisfy the test of patentability can, will be granted a patent under the Indian Patents Act. The test for patentability is there in section 21J. The test for patentability, it has to cri satisfy three cr criteria. First, it has to be new, what we refer to as novel or novelty. And obviously, as we mentioned, only products and processes can be patented. These are the two broad categories. So whatever you want to patent should either fit into these two categories. So it has to be, the invention has to be novel. The invention should involve an inventive step. The inventive step is defined as something which is not obvious to a person skilled in the art. A person skilled in the art is a peer for the inventor in his own field, knowing what he knows. An inventive step, when we mention that it should be something that is not obvious, and this is a concept which we'll be explaining in the classes to come, and it's something which needs constant repetition and reminder, and the concept will, your understanding of the concept will also grow as we expose you to some elements of drafting in the drafting class because you will understand how to get over an obviousness uh, 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 obviousness argument in drafting a claim or an obviousness uh, uh, what you call uh, objection in an while drafting a claim and this is also something which we'll be as we introdu introduce more material and case laws you you will have a better understanding of what the uh, the idea of in inventive step is for now it is something that is not obvious to a person skilled in the art there are also two other categories like it should involve a technical advance over existing knowledge and it should have uh, uh, economic significance either either of this or both. Now, this was an amendment that recently came, uh, but the traditional definition was that inventive step is something which is not obvious to a person skilled in the art. And it should involve utility, it should be capable of use, that is what is referred to in the act as capable of industrial application. Improvements can also qualify as inventions. Now, patentability, as we said, uh, it should satisfy the definition of invention and it should also come out of the statutory exception. The statutory exceptions are in section 3 and 4. Uh, in the next class, we'll be dealing with that in detail and we'll also be covering some aspects of novelty, inventive step and utility. Novelty. Now, there is a, uh, there are two standards of novelty. One is a relative novelty where the search for novelty is done within certain uh, parameters and there's this absolute novelty absolute novelty where anything disclosed anywhere could kill the novelty of an invention the world almost uh, without exception follows the absolute standard of novelty uh, novelty requires your invention to be new in the sense that it should not have gone before what you have claimed in the invention uh, in patent law we use the word anticipate the 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 prior art should not have anticipated your invention either by publication or by use anticipation by use is difficult to prove but nevertheless that's a, a category there are exceptions to anticipation which we have already um, uh, when we showed you the word document we just ran through those exceptions uh, something like uh, if you disclose or if you present a paper before a learned society uh, and 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 you present it to uh, like a scientific community you present a paper then the act technically allows you a one year grace period to follow up a uh, application now there are details there we'll come to that but but this is there are some exceptions as to you may make certain disclosures and those disclosures will not kill the novelty of the invention because they come under the exceptions now, novelty is defined as something that does not form a part of the public domain or state of the art. Uh, there could be a thesis lying in a library of a, uh, of a university. And if the matter is disclosed there, though it could be something which is not searchable on the internet, but still that could amount to a something that is a part of the public domain. So we have various case laws which explain what is the public domain and what is the state of the art. 
Now, in determining novelty, you will first ask what is the invention about, what is the information disclosed in the prior art, and then you will say or demonstrate that the invention is new. Obviousness, as I said, it, it has two extra requirements in India. That is, it should uh, it should be a technical advance over the existing knowledge and or both it, 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 it's, it's, it's one thing or both it should involve uh, something of economic significance uh, and together with those two elements or one of them it should also be not obvious to a person skilled in the art and this is something which we'll be explaining in greater detail in the classes to come capable of industrial application is the most harmless of the uh, three criteria for patentability because this is rarely a source of uh, revocation of a patent whereas the other two are very strong sources especially inventive step is probably the most uh, lethal ground on which most inventions are rejected and it continues to be that way for a, a good number of reasons now this uh, utility requirement is a simple requirement because the act itself says that it should be capable of industrial application so even if there is no immediate application if it can be applied in the future you could still satisfy the test and you would recollect that the patent act now requires especially in india it requires working statements to be filed with regard to a patent now many a times an an inventor or or a patentee will file that we are just planning to use or we are not using it now we would use it in the future that's that's again uh, explains that the capability of industrial application is something which can happen in the future 